So it looks like the stage is set for a second round of Ultramarine's first company versus Tyranids. There's major characters entering the fray, technological innovations on both sides, and some lore and backstory for the Leviathan box. Let's talk about the new lore of Warhammer 40k 10th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd do a bit of a summary for all the lore and details that we know so far of the Fourth Tyrannic War and how that's going to impact 40k 10th edition. Over the past few weeks, Games Workshop has slowly been giving us more and more details as to this, so I thought I'd put it all together in a quick summary video, in particular focusing on a few other interesting things that we've learned from the Leviathan box. First up, basically the stage for this being set is the history of the Tyrannic Wars. Tyranids really haven't been around in the 40k galaxy for all that long, only having small incursions with a minor hive fleet and some infiltrating gene stealers before M41. But when they arrive proper, of course, they arrive in force. First up, we had High Fleet Behemoth attack Ultramar with an awesome hammer blow in the Galactic East. That was the force that was broadly halted in the battle former Crag, but not until they'd slain every single member of the Ultramarine's first company, lots of dead Terminators there. Then, after great defences were prepared, High Fleet Kraken swept in after an uprising unrest of lots of Gene Stealer cults turning planets to the Tyranid side, disorganising the defenders, and then the Kraken struck with many heads, using its resources far more carefully than the hammer blow of Behemoth. Notable in that conflict were them laying waste to Iandan and turning it into the ghost warrior paradise that it is today. Then the third tyrannic war was High Fleet Leviathan rearing its head. This struck in a great wave below the galactic plane. It was realised for the threat of what it was, and the Imperium took some absolutely drastic measures this time, conducting exterminatus and bombarding entire worlds in its path to deny crucial biomass to the swarm. More or less they were successful in isolating it and stopping it from reaching the galaxy at large, but only through enormous sacrifice. A major tendril of the swarm was halted at the devastation of Baal, both by the combined efforts of the Blood Angels and also with a bit of a deus ex machina from the bloodthirster Cabanda swooping in. The opening of the Great Rift allowed a bunch of demons into the galaxy, and they were happy to cut up the Leviathan Tyranids, not wanting the Blood Angels to be taken down by what they'd see as a lesser foe. Then we've had the entire fight in Warzone Octarius as well, with a big scrap between Orcs and Tyranids. Again, the main aim of the Imperium here was to isolate the conflict and to try and not let it escape the subsector. They were only partially successful though, and in the fights of the Orcs versus the Tyranids, it seems like the Leviathan Tyranids broadly had the better of it. Several major Orc armies and leaders cast down by the Swarm Lord and the encroaching swarms. That leads us up to today, which is the fourth Tyrannic War. Leviathan seems to be resurgent once more, but it's not just the same swarm as the previous one. This new force attacks from an entirely unexpected angle, swooping in from the Galactic West. This is very roughly the broad invasion path of the Leviathan High Fleet in the fourth Tyrannic War then. It comes from a new and unexpected angle where there isn't necessarily a big military build-up to deal with an enormous Tyranid invasion fleet. Lots of the Tyranid fighting specialists are over on the Galactic East, having dealt with the Beermoth, Kraken and most of Leviathan over there. It's also kind of unsettling just from the nature of it, as it kind of implies that there's Tyranid High Fleets literally all around the galaxy. You don't know which side they're going to strike from. And no one knows just how much might and power there is out there. Is the galaxy just going to get overrun by an absolutely insurmountable threat of these space locusts? As with the other Tyranid Hive fleets, they seem to be broadly making their way in the general direction of Terra. There's a fair bit of speculation that the Tyranid Hive fleets are broadly drawn in by the Astronomicon's light. The Emperor's great big blazing beacon in the warp that allows ship navigation, but might well attract some unwanted space predators that can see it as a shining beacon. There was also that Pharos Lighthouse explosion incident as well that probably drew the Tyranids in as well. Overall, all the warp beacons in the galaxy probably aren't the best thing if you want to stay unnoticed by the great devouring space swarms. According to one of their preview videos, I believe they said that the initial battles will be fought in, I think it's the Bastille subsector. Not sure if we've ever had the location of that one confirmed on star maps or anything like that, but it seems likely that it's going to be somewhere on the approach between the Segmentum Pacificus and Segmentum Sober. Attacking the galaxy are the Tyranid swarms of Leviathan. Leviathan are the purple carapace Tyranids, and in general when they make war, perhaps what's renowned about them is their flexibility and their willingness to adapt over and above other high fleets. They often tend to combine both enormous galactic might and then direct it with augmented leader beasts over and above the other high fleets, frequently manifesting the Swarm Lord for example, and making war on the ground, in the air, and burrowing underneath the enemy's defences. When the Leviathan High Fleet suffer a major setback and they're taken down by one foe or another, they'll often manifest units that are basically impervious to that way of killing them the first time round, or dramatically adapted to overcome the specific foe that took them down the last time. 
As probably is expected with this kind of high fleet, it looks like this time round they're bringing a bunch of new toys to the table. It does seem to be quite common in the background for defenders and people fighting the Tyranids to run into new organisms that have never been encountered before, perhaps tying in particularly well with Games Workshop releasing new Tyranid models to sell us, as we've gotten a great big wave in the Leviathan box. For new organisms that we've seen in the reveal trailer and now I've seen miniatures of as well, it seems that we've got a new Tyrant for the first time ever. This one's basically a Hive Tyrant zone throw. The command ability of a Hive Tyrant, but fights with mental might as opposed to physical strength. An alpha level Psyker that seems to have no trouble just chewing straight through a Space Marine Librarian in that reveal fight. There's some new Barb Gaunts, mini anti-infantry bombardment Tyranids attached to a Gaunt body as opposed to the Biovore Pyrovore type thing. There's a new all-consuming beast called a Psychophage, that's a Tyranid organism typically from later in the attack cycle to break down and consume a bunch of the planet. It's got a particular tendency to try and seek out any psychic organisms and consume that for the hive mind's processing. A swarm of Neurogaunts that is basically under the direct thrall of a nearby synaptic creature, acting as little vassals and protecting it from threats. And there's also the return of Von Ryan's Leapers, mini lictors that hunt in packs that we haven't really heard too much about in 40k's lore history. They had been encountered by the Imperium before, but it seems like this is the first time that they're being used in a major way. I'm sure the Tyranids of Leviathan will be doing what Tyranids normally do, having great hive fleets moving from world to world, stripping them bare from biomass, aiming to build up more and more momentum in their swarm to try and overrun the enemy defenders. As they advance across the galaxy, they cast a great big shadow in the warp where you can't get any psychic communication through, so worlds go dark until we know whether or not they've survived. Pitted against the Tyranids, the defenders of humanity, it looks like Rebute Gilliman is marshalling the defence here. He's Lord Commander of the Imperium and marshalling the defences from Terra. We saw him in the reveal trailer, looking over his tactical map and giving a monologue about the differences between the Imperial propaganda and the actual dire tactical situation, where things are dangerously close to being overrun and the Tyranid swarms from taking Terra. You can see on his battle map there's plenty of worlds that are holding out, but lots of them have just been overrun and are going red and dead. The Imperium's taking some big casualties here. At least for the initial phases of the conflict, it seems that the Imperium is striking out in individual elite battle fleets that they're calling Soul Blades. I guess the name comes from the Segmentum Solar. And rather than just meeting the might of Leviathan head-on, these tend to be doing a little bit more tactical stuff, perhaps striking at areas where the Tyranids aren't particularly strong, and sabotaging their invasion and consumption operations in one way or another. It sounds like the idea is to strike at worlds where the Tyranids are kind of overrunning, but might be driven back, break the power of the Tyranids on those planets, and stop them harvesting the biomass quite as easily, and ideally take out any important synaptic creatures, so the command chain breaks down and the Tyranids are drawn into confusion. It looks like there's a very decent amount of Ultramarines present in these fleets, particularly members of the First Company. Apparently the composition really is quite varied though, and there's plenty of other Space Marines about, as well as Adeptus Custodes striking out from Terror as well, and being a bit more proactive and pragmatic. I guess the idea is to prevent the Tyranids from ever reaching Terror. I guess we'll see whether or not that's the case. I certainly can't see the 40k lore culminating in the Emperor getting eaten by Tyranids, to be honest. I'm sure this isn't going to wind up as some sort of final defeat for the Imperium out of this little story, but it'll be interesting to see how close they get to the Holy Throne world itself. I don't believe that the Tyranids have ever had an incursion that's got that far. These Soul Blade fleets are mainly aimed to buy Terra time to mass fresh armies for the main brunt of the defence when it comes to actually taking on the brute force of the Leviathan Hive fleets. From previous updates that we have, apparently that Lord Solar Leontus of the Imperial Guard will be marshalling the Guard forces within that sector. Kind of interesting as we haven't really heard that much in terms of lore for him yet. And it looks like there was going to be a major battle recorded at a world called Sanctum, which is on the border between the Segmentum Solar and Segmentum Pacificus, which looks like it's a homeworld for the chapter of the White Templar Space Marines. Potentially could be somewhat bad news for an established chapter, I guess. It was kind of interesting to learn that one of the other major characters of the Ultramarines will be present in this fight as well. Captain Agaman of the Ultramarines is actually represented in the Leviathan box itself. The Terminator Captain miniature is meant to be painted up as him if you want to, though he hasn't actually got any Ultramarine sculpted details on him, so he can be used to represent other captains as well. He is quite a cool miniature, stomping a Tyranid head into the dirt there, and I noticed that they had painted the word Agaman in some very tiny detailing on that little banner thing that he had on his right shoulder, a nice little bit of tying in the box with the lore there. Agaman is the captain of the Ultramarine's first company, so really quite a major figure within the chapter, a potentially successor to Marnius Kalgar, along with Cato Sicarius, and this guy's a 200-year-old veteran of multiple campaigns, 
I believe that pointed to be one of the tetrarchs of Ultramar after some chaos incursions with Abaddon attacking the area around about the end of the 41st millennium. I can't help but think that the Ultramarines' first company is going to be in a bit of a grudge match situation against the Tyranids this time round. The Tyranids did wipe out and kill all of them on the Battle of the Macrag a while back. They were definitely going to be extra angry at avenging their forebears. Another interesting technological innovation on the Defender's side as well is something called the Apothecary Biologis. This guy's apparently not a medic like most of the Apothecaries, but is actually a battlefield scientist. Looks like he's carrying a great big secure containment vat of samples around. His job is to sample the Tyranid organisms and see if they can find some sort of technological innovation to put a major dent in the Leviathan swarms. Definitely a character who's got the potential to drive some lore changes and give the defending forces a bit of an edge against the Tyranids of High Fleet Leviathan if his work and research comes to anything. We've also got a little bit more details as to the actual narrative of the Leviathan box itself. 40k's big new Leviathan launch box, which is apparently supposed to represent a world that's being fought over by the Soul Blade fleets and the Tyranids of Leviathan. Specifically a world that's been kind of overrun, but the Imperials are trying to lead a fight back. There's still some survivors on the planet's surface, and they're receiving some reinforcements in terms of Terminators and First Company veterans. Apparently, the Phobos Lieutenant, who's decked out like a Tyranid Hunter, is actually a named character, not for rules purposes, but just for law. He's called Lieutenant Castamon, and represents a prominent figure amongst the survivors, a Tyrannic War veteran who's been holding out on the world against all odds, and I'm sure will be somewhat happy to receive some Terminator reinforcements. He represents one of the leaders of a previous expedition to the planet by the Ultramarines, it was aimed to be recovered and link up with the current Ultramarines forces for the fight back. Then the Terminators and the First Company will land to assist the overrun forces. I think this box maybe just seems a little bit more themed than the vast majority of other 40k box sets. It really looks like they made a little bit of effort to realise some lore appropriate models on both sides. It certainly has a First Company feel to it between Terminators and Sternguard. The Tyranids are somewhat similar as well. They said that it's in the world that's in the process of consumption. I guess that'll explain the presence of that Psychophage beast. I think just judging by the teaser trailer though, it doesn't look like everything is going to go well for the attacking Space Marines, unfortunately. It looks like they lose several key members of their expedition. In particular, the Librarian looks like he doesn't make it. The cinematic trailer implies the world might be lost, but doesn't really 100% show us either way. I'd say that's most of the stuff that we know at the moment, though it sounds like there's a bunch more details on the way. Games Workshop have shown off a couple of publications which I'm sure will delve into the story a fair bit more. For the Leviathan box in particular, it looks like there's going to be this book called Leviathan by Darius Hinks. A bit scant on details at the moment, but just says in which the Ultramarines mount a desperate defence in the face of the monstrous High Fleet Leviathan. And I do notice that that Lieutenant and the Gravis Apothecary both feature prominently on the cover. Then we've also got a narrative storyline thing called the Tyrannic War Crusade expansion for Warhammer 40k. This one's going to be a book that can either be bought separately at the launch of 10th edition, or alternatively it will be built into that enormous Leviathan book that's coming in the box set. Again, I'm sure that that will contain a fair bit of story of the conflict, plus I'm sure a whole lot of Crusade rules and apparently a mission set for fighting in the area via a series of linked games. Will be interesting to see if either of these deliver on any sort of conclusion to the conflict, or if it's just going to be left as one of the burning ones throughout Warhammer 40k 10th. Should be interesting to see how close the Tyranids get, and whether or not they're truly going to siege the throne world of terror. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the lore details that we have so far for Warhammer 40k 10th edition. Feel free to mention anything else I might have glossed over down in the comments below as well. Games Workshop has been keeping a steady trickle of stuff coming with a whole load of different sources and posts. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k updates coming, with new stuff about 10th edition coming really quite a lot at the moment. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description below if you'd like to help keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.